Hello, everyone. Welcome to Practical GCP. So I spent like five months maybe talking about the technical solutions on Google Cloud. So instead of talking about technology itself, uh, today I would like to talk about the team leadership in the technology industry. So if you look at this triangle I prepared here, um, very often when people are talking about leadership, they only talk about leadership as a kind of vague concept. What exactly does it mean, especially in technology? So in my opinion, I think it's actually broken down into those three parts. You've got leadership, management, and technical expertise. So I'll go into each one of those and explain why they're all important to support to the success that you would like to achieve in building your teams. First of all, I would like to explain the difference between leadership and management. This is something, even after so many years, this is still very easy to get confused about the difference between the two. I've seen a metaphor recently, which is quite interesting. I can't find the original quote, so I've kind of made it up, right? So the, what it says is, imagine there's a ladder. Leadership ensures the ladder is put on the right wall, right? The correct wall. And management is to ensure that we actually climb to the top. So these two, in my opinion, you can see there are counterparts. You can't just have one, but not the other, right? There's a number of very important things I think leadership kind of, we have to do as a, as a lead, right? So one, number one, I think is to set the direction of travel. If this isn't clear, it's very easy for the team to focus on these tiny little goals that does not actually achieve things, something significant. So this is something, uh, for example, you can set like a quarterly goal, six months goal, but also, also have the vision, the long-term vision in, in your head and make sure everyone's clear about what we're trying to achieve as a team together. Inspiring um, the others when working together is so important in leadership. It's not about control, right? You can't just tell people to do this without giving them a reason. And that is the quality as a leader to get the others to follow you, to work with you together. And then, then you can achieve something significant. One of the key things as a leader is to, you have to do is to lead by example. What I mean by that is, let's say, let's say there's a situation, right? There's, there's a difficult problem in the team. And then everyone kind of start looking at each other, but no one's actually taking an action, right? Leadership is about, and this can be anybody, right? Anybody in the team, not necessarily just yourself. And this is really important. Um, is you see there's no, you know, there's a problem no one else is solving. You jump in and solve the problem and then set by example to give the rest of the team an example how, you know, how this can be done, right? Don't wait and don't wait and look at each other and then and just, just get it, let things get dragged. And as a lead that you, you, you jump into problems and help everyone else and offer solutions to move things forward, right? That's, that's what I say, lead by example. And there's a counterpart to that, right? So leading by example is a very good thing. But if you actually lead of the team, you don't want to just also try to do everything yourself when you're trying to scale your team, right? And then it, it is also important to delegate. Let's say there's, there's different problems, there's different areas. You should not do all of these things yourself. You should delegate, but also support. Uh, the the person that you delegate you to to make sure they kind of kind of achieve it right this is kind of you can do this via regular feedbacks one to ones um, whichever way you prefer but but you have to kind of delegate and support so this is I think one of the fundamentals uh, to scale the team to have more leaders in the team um, rather than yourself as a single point of failure and finally don't be a pain in the bum right if 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 nobody wants to work with you. And then I think it's all lost, right? The thing I would often say is you need to be kind, right? You don't need to be nice, but you need to be kind. But that means giving people feedbacks, uh, constructive feedbacks, and help each other improve. So now let's talk a bit about management. So in many companies, especially where there's tech companies, and some say you don't need management, right? You just lead and you set the goals, get a team to self-managing it. 
Um, but in reality, it doesn't work like that, right? So even let's say if you got the goals, not everyone is uh, is is you know is maybe aligned with you, right? What do you mean by the goals? You, you set something, you write them down. Is the team just going to manage my, themselves from the very start? I don't think so, right? So there are techniques to manage the team to get there, which is, for example, set goals and timelines. So when you set the goals and then you align with the team, then these are the things you need to achieve, but also by when. So I often call this soft deadlines because you know it's, it's not possible to just, especially when you have this high level objectives, you can't just have these things set you know, in, in an exact date, right? This is gonna be done um, by that time, but you need to have a, you know, like three months, six months, or even a couple of years of where you want to be, be, right? It can be more vague in the long term, but when it gets into the short term, it needs to be very specific. And then, you know, you know in, the, in the monthly or, or quarterly goals that you want to be very specific and you want to set these soft deadlines. Um, and then the, the reason for the timelines is, especially a lot of the times uh, I've seen is if you don't set any timelines, right? Pete, the team can be very easily drifted to, do, to start doing random things. That's not very focused. So when that happens, it's not very good for themselves because you know when things doesn't get delivered, no one gets credit, right? And then and it's also not good for the business because you know that's what pays our salaries. It's just a fact. Um, so it's very important to set goals and then the timelines to make sure that we align with those. But those goals has to be realistic and the timelines cannot be very, you know, by the date, right? Those things can get slipped, but you need to have a pretty good estimate when these things are going to be done. And if you do fail those timelines and then make sure you review, right? And then how do you actually get there? Um, and then set the next timelines, right? So, so those are the things that one thing I often say is, um, is set the goal and work backwards. So when you see where the goal is, and you start looking at, for example, you're trying to get to some system into the production stage, right? Running on life. But then you start mapping out what exactly do you need to go live, right? That, that's, that, what, that's what I mean by working backwards. You don't just start digging into the technology stack and start building the code without a very clear mindset, how that's gonna go to the production environment, um, you know, uh, w- without the details. Sorry. So in that case, so, so you work backwards and then you can start setting the goals and set the timelines to, to achieve those one step at a time, right? And then that's where management is really important in terms of uh, breakdown of problems. So when you work with a team, uh, especially if you are the you know, first contact person that you, you probably know a lot more than a team in terms of the, the goals and objectives, then you need to help the team to break down these problems, right? So it's not just like three months you deliver that. It's to break things into smaller achievable chunks by working backwards from the goals itself. And then there's much better chances you actually deliver it. Do regular check-ins, right? So, you know, if, if, you, if you just, you know, set, let's say break the problems down, set the goals and then Wow, three months later, I just hope this is gonna everything's gonna be done. It's not gonna be done, right? It doesn't work like that. In reality, there are issues, there's there's problems. And then it is the, you know, you as a as a leader or as a manager's responsibility to actually do the check-ins. So when you do the check-ins, you ask people the right question. If you don't ask questions, you ask the question, right? You ask a question based on the goals and timelines you, you you talked about. Not all of these conversations are going to be pleasant, keep that in mind but it's actually constructive and it's very necessary and it's going to get you there. And it's good for everyone's career because we achieve something very significant and achieve the success together. So that's why it's really important to do check-ins, ask the right questions, and then you know, review what you've done so far. If there's problems, solve it and move on, right? And again, whether you're you know, doing the leadership part or you're doing the management part, don't be a pain in the bum, right? Work as a team support each other, you know, listen to each other's the reasons and then be constructive um, and then solve problems together, right? Just, you know, don't point fingers and just say it's your fault, it's your fault, it does not help, right? Finally, the technical expertise. The two most important things that you can do if you have good technical expertise. So I've been in the industry for maybe 16, 17 years. I still do hands-on these days. 
But the problem is if you, especially when you start getting into the senior leadership, is the amount of time that you spend in those areas will significantly reduce. Um, so I probably work time doing hands on, I don't know, like 5%, right? Or even less than that. Um, but that is the right thing to do because if you spend all of this time writing code or doing the hands-on stuff and design everything yourself, so you cannot focus on the leadership side nor the management side. And then everyone's going to hate you and then you achieve nothing. You cannot scale the team and then you'll become the single point of failure. That's really, really important to remember. Um, but having good technical expertise, and again, this is something in my opinion, right? I do not think, so because let's say leadership and management take away um, a lot of your time, most of your time, and then you do not have time to improve your ten technical expertise. After a year or two or three years, then you fall behind. Then if you fall behind, you can't lead a team anymore. I'll explain in a, in a, bit, in a bit why. But then, um, then I just feel that you, you, this is not something you can do in a nine to five job, right? If you kind of like what you do, and then you need to brush up your hands-on capabilities, whether that's within working hours or outside of working hours. Obviously, you don't want to burn yourself out. You know, but a few hours outside of work in a week is absolutely necessary to brush up your skills. You need to keep reading the blog posts, keep reading other, what other people are doing, do some code reviews for your own team, and then keep studying, right? And then, and then, and then prototyping, especially prototyping is actually really effective. Um, uh, keep keep uh, on top of the, especially some of the newer technologies gets published. So, you know, we're talking about Google Cloud. This is really important technique to do proof of concept. You can see some of these videos I've done in there. Um, and, and now you can, that is a very effective way to keep up to speed, right? A lot of these new things, they may be new, but with your experience that you've done in the past, uh, it's quite easy to kind of keep on top of things. Um, um, and that, that's why the technical expertise is, is something kind of you really want to um, just have it, have it kind of keep it up, right? It doesn't matter what your role is and how senior kind of in, in senior leadership and you get to. Um, there's two things, right? In the technical expertise, it's important to once you have a very good foundation, uh, especially at, at a high level from architecture perspective and how you can actually help the team uh, and help the, the, the other senior leadership is you can align the leadership direction and then the direction of travel. So let's say you have a very ambitious goal, right? The, the whole senior leadership has a very ambitious goal. If you don't have the technical expertise, how do you know that how feasible that is, right? And then, so that's that's you know, if you if you if you have a good idea that you know these goals can be achieved, and then how does that align with the you know how mature technology is these days, and then how mature the the team you have is, right? And then you can map it out in your head, right? Is that a realistic direction of travel? But at the same time. On the management side, you can start setting expectations, right? You can align, sorry, you can align the expectations. So you can say like, because of A and B and C, because these technologies are not mature enough or because these other things usually take a lot longer or require a lot more resources to achieve. And then you can be very pro proactive about solving these problems ahead of times, right? So that is why technical expertise is so important if you do not have a very good foundation of the technical expertise, all these leadership and management fall apart. I think, um, especially in, 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 the, in the leadership side, right? So it's one of the things I remember, uh, which myself been struggling, well, I've been kind of back and forth between the, you know, the, 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 the you know, either be a kind of very hands-on role and then kind of back to a bit of leadership and management. And I always felt like after a while, right? Like a year or so, um, then I start losing respect from other team members. And that is a real thing. Because if you start telling people, you know, I, I used to know this stuff, right? This is how I used to know how it works. But, but things move on, right? There's better ways to do things. And then sometimes when you don't understand it and a team trying to explain it to you and then you don't, I still don't understand it and you don't do your own research, you don't do your own study either, then you lose your respect and then you lose leadership and management and no one's going to listen to you anymore. So that's why this is so important to, to have this in the technology world, to have the technical expertise that will really kind of support you with the, with the other two roles. And finally, again, don't be a pain in the bum, right? It doesn't matter how good you are. You can still do hands-on, whatever. There's always someone better than you. I learn everything from someone else in the team every single day, right? That is just the fact. So don't be a pain in the bum. 
just be open-minded, be humble, learn from each other, have fun. Um, and then the support your team, you know, if you come back to look at this triangle again, you've got these three pillars. And then and from my experience, um, if you have these three in a right, you know, well-balanced way, um, and then you can you can build a team whatever the size and a very strong team and then everyone's going to work together you know uh, in harmony okay that's the end of the session today so um not going to bore you with uh, no technical technical solutions today so hope you find it useful see you next time go, go, go out.